In the beginning of the movie, there's a man named Hanzoa. He was having a job interview. He convinced the HR that he really wanted to work at this bank, which is called Tokyo Bank. The reason was because he wanted to repay this bank's kindness. In the past, his parents had a factory and Tokyo Central Bank was the one who helped with the loan, so that Hanzoa's parents could continue running the factory. Besides Hanzoa, there were hundreds of other people waiting for interviews, hoping to be accepted and get a job in this bank. However, Hanzawa was also accepted at the branch office in Osaka and this time he was seen attending a ceremony for welcoming new employees at the bank. The scene moved, showing Hanzawa was scolded by his boss because he was deemed guilty of having lost 500 million yen. He was even told to kneel and apologize, but Hanzawa didn't accept it and said even though it's not his fault, he will return the 500 million yen. The beginning of this tragedy was when Hanzawa visited a screw factory who asked Tokyo Bank for a loan. Hanzawa saw the condition of the factory and he was sure that the quality of the products looked great. The factory owner wanted to borrow 30 million yen. Then Hanzawa said he would try to help the loan until it was dispersed. The factory owner was very grateful to Hanzawa. Days later, there was a meeting in the bank to discuss who was entitled to a loan from the bank. Here, Hanzawa is trying to get the loan application from the factory he met yesterday to be approved. However, Hanzawa's partners said that they want to focus on giving loans with a target of 1 trillion and currently, they need 500 million yen more. So giving a loan of only 30 million yen will be meaningless. Then their boss, Asano, said that currently there is an iron company called Osaka Steel that wants to borrow 500 million yen. If it can be approved, then the target will be achieved and their branch office will receive an award. Asano appointed a new employee named Nakanishi. But Hanzawa didn't accept it because Nakanishi had only been working for two years. Asano then appointed Hanzawa to become the person in charge. The other employees couldn't refuse Asano's order. After that, they went to the Osaka Steel factory. The factory looked really old. When they waited inside, they were ignored and had to wait almost half an hour to meet the owner. But finally, they met the factory owner, Higashida. He was very arrogant and said that actually there was another bank that wanted to lend him money, but he thought that Hanzawa and Nakanishi seemed very pushy. Hanzawa wanted to do a factory inspection first, but the owner refused. If they don't believe him, then Higashida would choose another bank. In the office, Hanzawa faced Asano and said that Osaka Steel looks suspicious. Therefore, Hanzawa wanted to ask for some time to check the actual condition of the Osaka Steel. However, Asano refused and said they didn't have any more time. They had to lend Osaka Steel 500 million yen in order to achieve the target. Asano even told Nakanishi to make a submission document for tomorrow. Hanzawa thought that everything was too hasty, but Asano remained stubborn. That night, Hanzawa called his wife and said that he couldn't go home because tomorrow morning, he had to take care of the loan at the Osaka Steel. That night, Nakanishi made loan application forms until early morning. The next morning, Hanzawa checked the documents and some of them were not quite right. After that, he kept it on his laptop for later revision. Then he had a meeting with other employees. But when he returned to his desk, the document on his laptop was missing. It turned out that the document had been taken by Asano. And the worst thing was that Asano had given the document to the central bank, so that the loan could be dispersed immediately. Asano even gave the loan without any collateral. At that time, Hanzawa couldn't stand Asano's hasty attitude, but Asano said that this was all for the sake of their office to become the best branch bank in Osaka. If anything happens, Asano will be responsible. Hanzawa couldn't say anything more. In the evening, Hanzawa and his friend, who's also a bank employee, played kendo to relieve his fatigue. After that, Hanzawa went home and chatted with his wife, Hana. Some time passed and finally, the 500 million yen loan for Osaka Steel was approved. After that, their branch office also received an award for meeting the loan target amount 1 trillion. Asano, as the office manager, was given an award by the president director. After work, Hanzawa and his two friends, Kondo and Tomeri, chatted about their work as bank employees. Tamara got information that several bank employees had been transferred to other banks because of their poor performance. Then one day, Hanzawa received a report that Osaka Steel suffered losses of up to 100 million yen. Their company was even threatened with bankruptcy. If that happens, Osaka Steel might not be able to pay the installments, and that 500 million yen won't be able to be paid back. Osaka Steel was suspected of doing window dressing. So window dressing is a manipulation of financial data, so that the company looks fine so it can get a loan from the bank when in fact the company's performance is far below the manipulated data. Hanzawa immediately went to Osaka Steel and met Higashida. However, Higashida said to Hanzawa that from the start, it was Hanzawa's party that forced lending the money. Higashida said his business was now at a loss, so he couldn't pay the installments, let alone return the 500 million yen. And it was also the bank's fault, because they couldn't see Osaka Steel's financial data. 
Finally, one day, Osaka Steel officially went bankrupt and Hikishida disappeared. Hanzawa met his son to let him know about this matter. But at that time, the deputy manager blamed Hanzawa for not checking Osaka Steel's financial condition first. Then Hanzawa was shocked because it was Asano who ordered to immediately approve the loan. But the deputy manager did not accept Hanzawa blaming Asano. He actually asked Hanzawa to kneel to Asano for his mistake. Of course, Hanzawa refused to kneel. Then Hanzawa demanded Asano's promise that he would be responsible if something happened. Immediately, Asano said that this was not the time to blame each other. Then Asano said that their priority now was to take back the 500 million yen from Higashida. Asano agreed if Hanzawa indeed was sure he could do that. If not, Hanzawa knows what the consequences will be. Hanzawa went home and told Hana about his problems at the office. Hana was annoyed because her husband had to be responsible because Asano should be the one to blame. But Hanzawa explained that's the reality in the office. If the boss makes a mistake, then his subordinates are the ones who are responsible for that. The next day, Hanzawa had lunch with his best friend, Tomari. Here. Tomari said if yesterday he saw Asano visiting the head of the branch office, and they're talking about Osaka Steel. Tomari said that Asano would scapegoat Hanzawa. And if that happens, Hanzawa would be moved to a small office. So to avoid that, Hanzawa has to take the 500 million yen back, no matter what. Meanwhile, at the head office, Asano met with the executive director. Asano reported that the mistake of the 500 million yen loan for Osaka Steel was entirely Hanzawa's responsibility. Then, Asano assured the director that he would get rid of Hanzawa. That evening, Asano had just returned from the office. He was suddenly confronted by Hanzawa who was waiting for him. Without further ado, Hanzawa asked Asano who is to blame in the 500 million yen loan case. Hanzawa also thought that he would soon be disqualified. That Asano said that in this case, someone must be blamed and he can't possibly be blamed because it will affect all their branch offices. Asano said he will definitely help Hanzawa, and if Hanzawa is transferred to another branch, he will try to return Hanzawa to his former office again. However, Hanzawa didn't believe Asano's words. In the past, Asano said that he would be responsible. But in reality, he even ran away from his responsibilities. Hanzawa asked Asano to apologize and kneel to him, if Hanzawa succeeds in returning the 500 million yen. Asano blared Hanzawa and accepted the challenge. The next morning, Hanzawa starts looking for Higashida. He started by visiting a factory that collaborated with Osaka Steel. At the factory, suddenly Hanzawa saw someone about to end his life. So Hanzawa immediately helped him so that the rope wouldn't get caught in his neck. The rope was cut, but Hanzawa fell unconscious. In his stupor, he remembered his past again. At that moment at night, he heard his father, who owned a screw factory, calming down the employees because they heard that the factory would be closed. Then someone from the bank came and was going to confiscate all the assets of the factory. Hanzawa's parents begged them not to confiscate their assets, but the banker didn't want to care. Then one day, little Hanzawa called his father because they had a visitor. And how shocked he was to see his father hanging dead. The bank which confiscated all Hanzawa's father's assets was the Tokyo Bank. And now Hanzawa works at that bank. When Hanzawa graduated from his school, he told his mother he would work at Tokyo Central Bank. His mother disagreed because Tokyo Central Bank was the murderer of Hanzawa's father. However, with confidence, Hanzawa said that's the reason he had to work there. Back to the present, Hanzawa woke up from fainting. The person who wanted to end his life was the owner of the factory and he's now bankrupt. Hanzawa then defined that now they had the same enemy. Hanzawa asked the man's help to find Higashida. He will make Higashida suffer because he deceived them. However, the man takes Shia, didn't want to have anything to do with Higashida anymore. Hanzawa could only give his business card and asked to take Shia to call him if Takeshida changed his mind. The next day, Hanzo was surprised by the arrival of the tax authorities. They came without any notice and they asked for the bank data under the pretext of investigating a case. Hanzo thought they already knew about the Osaka Steel's case. Then they started checking all the data. The tax authorities wanted to use a photocopier. And suddenly, Hanzo had an idea. He pushed the photocopier into the room. After a while, they were done with their business and went home. Hanzo immediately opened the photocopier which he had connected to an external hard disk. He checked the hard disk and saw what data the tax authorities had checked. It turned out they had checked Osaka Steel's data, which meant that the tax authorities wanted to take Osaka Steel's assets too, including 500 million yen. Now Hanzo must quickly get the 500 million yen back, so that he doesn't get caught by the tax authorities. That night, Hanzawa and Kondo played Kendo. Kondo provided important information about the material supplier for the Osaka Steel Company. Maybe from there, Hanzawa can find out where Higashida is. The next day, Hanzawa went to that place. 
There, Hanzawa met the former financial staff of Osaka Steel. Hanzawa insisted on asking for Osaka Steel's balance book for him to check. The man finally gave it after Hanzawa continued to urge him. Hanzawa then asked Higashida's whereabouts. The man finally told Hanzawa that Higashida lived with his girlfriend in an apartment in Kyoto, with unit number 806. Without thinking twice, Hanzawa immediately rushed to the apartment. When he got there, apparently only apartment residents could enter. Luckily, a courier came in and Hanzawa also slipped in. He kept a document in an 806 locker. Hanzawa was waiting. If someone opened the locker, it meant she was Higashida's girlfriend. And finally, a woman in a red dress opened the locker. Hanzawa immediately confronted her and asked if she was Higashida's girlfriend. At the same time, Higashida appeared and just got out of his car. Hanzawa immediately approached him and asked him to return the 500 million yen. But Higashida refused, he even took a golf club from his bag, intending to attack Hanzawa. However, Hanzawa, who often practiced kendo, easily knocked Higashida down. Hanzawa ordered Higashida to come with him to the office now. But suddenly, Higashida's girlfriend appeared and hit Hanzawa. Higashida and his girlfriend then fled in a taxi. Another car also chased Higashida, and it turned out that it was from the tax authorities who were also after the 500 million yen. After that, Hanzawa received a call and got news that tomorrow, he would be tried by the bank regarding the Osaka Steel case. He looked very desperate because the trial would determine whether Hanzawa can continue working or maybe he will be fired. The next day, the trial was held. The first person in the trial was Nakanishi, Hanzawa's subordinate. The two people who were in the trial said that his answer will affect his career here. Meanwhile, Hanzawa was outside accompanied by Tomari. At that time, Tomari said that in this trial, Hanzawa just needed to answer with yes and apology. Tomari suggested that at this time, Hanzawa had to restrain himself and not make the problem worse. Hanzawa just silent and thought about that. Finally, the trial for Mekanesi was over, and it was Hanzawa's turn to enter the room. The court immediately asked why Hanzawa gave the 500 million yens loan to the Osaka Steel Company. Then Hanzawa explained that at that time, there was an urgent request, and he didn't check it carefully. A court judge then said that because of Hanzawa, their bank lost 500 million yen, and he kept hitting the table as if to intimidate Hanzawa. Hanzawa was silent for a moment and apologized for making some mistakes in this case. Then Hanzawa emphasized that part of the mistake was made by Asano, his boss. Hanzawa also blamed officers from the head office because it should take three days to approve the document from Asano. But in this case, they immediately agreed on the same day. However, they avoided it on the grounds that Hanzawa's office asked for an answer as soon as possible. Hanzawa questioned this, saying that it was impossible for the branch office to force the head office. Then Hanzawa emphasized that he was currently chasing the 500 million yen back and should not let anyone get in his way. They were speechless hearing Hanzawa's arguments. After that, Hanzawa left the room and his enthusiasm seemed to be on fire. Not long after that, Hanzawa got a call from the factory's owner who at that time was being helped by Hanzawa take Shia. He said that he would help Hanzawa as much as he could. And now Hanzawa was even more enthusiastic. Then Hanzawa visited take Shia. Take Shida checked the balance book from the Osaka Steel Financial Division. It can be seen that there is a transaction of 700 million yen between Osaka Steel and Take Shida's factory. Even though Higashida only received 500 million yen, that means 200 million yen was lost. Hanzawa also checked the entire balance sheet which had been written three years ago. Then it was revealed that in fact, Osaka Steel was deliberately bankrupted by Higashida so that he didn't have to return the money to the bank. Meanwhile, the tax bureau is also still targeting the Osaka Steel Company. They got data that Higashida has assets worth 50 million yen, which they can confiscate in the form of overseas property. It turned out that Hanzawa also received this news. Hanzawa knew about this because the property payment transaction was done through the Tokyo Central Bank account and Hanzawa worked in the bank. Even though it was only 50 million yen, Hanzawa was determined to confiscate the assets. But when he was about to go to investigate it, Asano's deputy brought some files and ordered Hanzawa to finish them right away. It turned out that it was Asano's strategy to prevent Hanzawa, so that he failed to get back the 500 million yen. Not long after that, Hanzawa received news that there was another factory owner who was also affected by the bankruptcy of the Osaka Steel Company. Hanzawa secretly left the office and met this person and his name was Itabashi. He told Hanzawa that since Osaka Steel went bankrupt, his factory had also stopped operating and he felt hopeless. Hanzawa then said that Higashiya had property worth 50 million yen abroad. Then Itabashi insisted on getting the resort. Hanzawa was just silent when he heard Itabashi's words. After that, Hanzawa immediately visited the property office where Higashiya kept his assets. 
However, when asked for information, the employee refused to reveal Higashida's information. It turned out that the employee had been bribed by Higashida to keep her mouth shut. So Hamzawa was forced to look for other ways to obtain these property assets. The next day, suddenly they were surprised by the arrival of the tax bureau again. Hanzawa suspected that they must have known about this property asset and wanted to trace the account owner. The tax bureau asked for account data with the suffix number 300 to 370. Among those numbers, an account with 355 was Higashida's property transaction account. It's clear that the tax bureau was after this data. The tax bureau was now heading to account data storage with Makanashi. Not long after, Hanzawa rushed through another way heading to the storage area. Fortunately, Hanzawa was able to get there first. He then took Higashida's account slip which contained a property transaction of 50 million yen. Not long after, the tax bureau also arrived there. Hanzawa was seen hiding and then left. The tax bureau immediately became angry because one transaction data was missing. They also asked that the missing transaction must be there before tomorrow. The scene moves on the Hanzawa. He met Takeshia and Itabashi. Itabashi wanted to see Higashida's balance sheet to get a clue. Then Hanzawa asked to meet again at 5 p.m. and he would bring the balance sheet to Edabashi. After that, Edabashi took a taxi and went home. In the taxi, Edabashi called Higashida. Apparently, they conspired and Higashida promised that the property worth 50 million yen would belong to Edabashi as long as Edabashi can get rid of Higashida's balance sheet. The balance sheet is strong evidence that Higashida falsified his financial condition and deliberately caused Osaka Steel to go bankrupt. If the book disappeared, then Higashida would be difficult to catch. At 5 p.m., Hanzawa brought the book to Itabsi. Then, Itabasi said he would check the book in the corner of the room. But suddenly, a man with a helmet appeared and hit Itabashi. And the book was taken away. Hanzawa then said it seemed like Higashida already knew that the book was with them, and he was one step ahead. In the evening, Itabashi met the man wearing the helmet who turned out to be his order. Itabashi took the book to get rid of it and immediately burned the balance book. And suddenly, Hanzawa came. It turned out he had been suspicious of Itabashi from the start. His suspicions began when Hanzawa told Itabashi that Hikashida had property abroad. However, Itabashi immediately said that it was a resort even though Hanzawa himself did not know that the property was a resort. Then Hanzawa checked Itabashi's family background. Itabashi's child happened to open an account at the bank where Hanzawa worked. Even though Itabashi's child was still at school, when Hanzawa checked it, there was a 10 million yen transaction in the name of Osaka Steel in the account. In the end, Itabashi admitted that he and Higashida were in cahoots and Hanzawa was too late because Itabashi had burned the balance book. However, Hanzawa showed Itabashi another balance book, which turned out to be the real one. And Itabashi burned the fake balance book. Hanzawa then threatened Itabashi that all of his actions would be reported to the police and Itabashi's family would know about his crimes. Itabashi begged that his actions should not be known to his family. Then he said that Higashida's property was in Hawaii. He also gave Hanzawa the complete address. Hanzawa immediately called Tomari because he had acquaintances in the legal department and might be able to confiscate Higashida's property in Hawaii. But at the same time, the tax bureau also found out about the property being located in Hawaii. So the tax bureau immediately went to the property office and asked for Higashida's data as well as the property. The next morning, Hanzawa got a call from Tomari that the property had been confiscated by Tokyo Central Bank. Finally, Hanzawa's struggle was not in vain. Not only that, Hanzawa also knows Higashida's whereabouts. He immediately went to the location. Hanzawa arrived at Villa Style House. Hanzawa entered the house, but there was no one because Higashida had run away. Suddenly, Hanzawa saw the head of the tax bureau, so Hanzawa approached him. The head of the tax bureau is in Kurosaki. At that time, Kurosaki said that Hanzawa is very annoying. Because of Hanzawa, Higashida has now run away. Hanzawa then got a call from Tomari who said that suddenly, Higashida's property in Hawaii has now been taken by the tax bureau. Kurosaki just smiled as if he knew the conversation on the phone. It turns out that the tax bureau threatened the head of the legal department in Tokyo Central Bank that his business could be taken by the people from the tax bureau if he didn't hand over the property in Hawaii to them. And finally, the 50 million yen property has now been taken by the tax bureau. Hanzawa felt challenged and said if anyone messes with him, he will definitely take revenge. Hanzawa met Asano again and Asano was annoyed because recently, Hanzawa had acted without his consent. Hanzawa answered that he didn't have time to immediately return the 500 million yen. Asano then reminds Hanzawa that in two days, there will be an inspection from the center. Hanzawa was surprised to hear that because the central inspection should have been notified a week before. 
Apparently, Asanam deliberately made a sudden inspection to make Hanzoa suffer a loss and ended up getting a bad reputation from the head office. Hanzoa then meets Takeshita again and tells him about the inspection. Hanzoa really wants to get the 500 million yen before the inspection day. Takeshita also has the latest information about the house and the apartment Hikashita usually lives in. Apparently, Hikashita only rented from one person, Komura. Hanzawa and Takeshita wanted to meet Komura, but it turned out he was being treated in hospital. Hanzawa asked for time to meet Komura, but the nurse forbade him. And suddenly, Konura himself came out of the room and finally Hanzawa was allowed to enter his room. Hanzawa told Komura everything. Konura laughed and said that as a bank employee, Hanzawa really deserved it. It seems that Komura has hatred towards banks, but Hanzawa remained focused on finding Higashida's whereabouts. Komura answered that he didn't know because it's been more than a year since he saw Higashida. Suddenly, a little boy came in and greeted Komura. For a moment, Komura looked happy, but it turned out the child was in the wrong room. Komura looked sad and immediately annoyed. Then suddenly, Komura asked Hanzawa to leave. After that, Hanzawa went home carrying a large box containing documents from his office. Hanzawa said to Hana that those were documents which Hazawa didn't want to show during the central inspection because it would give negative marks when it was checked. The next morning, the central inspection began. The people from the Tokyo Central Bank came there led by a man named Ojiso, who tried Hanzawa some time ago. Apparently, Ojiso had revenge on Hanzawa, because at that time, Ojiso felt he had lost to Hanzawa. It turned out that one of the inspectors who came with them was Tomari. The night before the inspection day, Tomari had called Hanzoa to say that he would be one of the inspectors. And this time, he couldn't help Hanzoa, because it would be dangerous for them. The inspectors began to check all the credit data carried out by Hanzoa and his subordinates. Hanzoa looked at all the lists of companies that borrowed money from the bank. What's more serious, they inspected only the companies with poor performance. This made Hanzawa and his subordinates were tried and held accountable for the company's poor performance, even though the bank had lent them funds. Nekanishi was scolded when he couldn't show the balance book owned by one of the companies, making Hanzawa even more cornered. After the inspection, Hanzawa still had to find Higashida's whereabouts. He went back to meet Komura. Then Komura said he no longer had anyone. In the past, he was kicked out of his own company by his subordinates because he was deemed to have done something illegal. The one who gave the information turned out to be a banker who collaborated with his company. Therefore, he now really hates banks because they had ruined his life. Komura suddenly coughed and Hanzawa accidentally saw a photo of Komura with his daughter and his grandchild. Hanzawa came out of the hospital and suddenly, a man approached him. The man introduced himself as a journalist and wanted to ask about the Tokyo Central Bank Osaka branch. The journalist made sure if it was true that the bank was cheated out of 500 million yen by the Osaka Steel Company. Hanzawa was initially not interested in him, but suddenly he had an idea. He would use the media to look for Higashida. The next day, the central inspection was carried out again. The inspection would last for three days, and on the second day, the inspectors again checked that the documents prepared by Hanzawa and his subordinates were incomplete. Because of that, Hanzawa was provoked and said that 70% of the companies that got loans from them performed well. But according to Hanzawa, during the past two days, the inspectors only checked the 30%, which was just bad. In fact, inspectors should not be able to know which companies have good or bad performance unless someone leaks the information to the inspectors. After the inspection, Asano called Hanzawa. Asano thought Hanzawa was rude for accusing the inspectors. But Hanzawa said if not them then maybe someone from their office. And the person who has the authority regarding company performance information is Asano. Hanzawa already suspected that Asano was the one who leaked the information, but he tried to restrain himself. That night, Hanzawa worked overtime and bought his subordinates food. Strangely, Nikanishi looked nervous as if he had something to hide from Hanzawa. Then, Nikanishi suddenly went out. On the next day, it was the last day of the inspection. Hanzawa saw Nikanishi just coming out of a room holding his cell phone. Hanzawa felt there was something strange about Nikanishi. Then the inspection started. The inspector started asking about another company whose performance was poor. According to Hanzawa, in the next three years, the company would improve. He had a meeting with the owner of the company and the details were in the document. But again, the details of the document were not there. Hanzawa was now surprised because it was clear that he personally put the document, but now it's gone. Because of that, Hanzawa was scolded. But suddenly, Hanzawa attacked them again and tried to say that all night, Hanzawa and his subordinates recorded all the documents that they prepared and the documents were already complete. In fact, it didn't stop there. Hanzawa also took photos of each file to ensure its completeness. If something is missing, it means that someone probably took it. Hanzawa is now asking the inspectors to search their bag. 
They clearly refuse it, but Tomari suddenly invited Hamzawa to search his bag if Hanzawa didn't believe him. Then Tomari asked the other inspectors to do the same and show that they were indeed innocent. It turns out that Tomari intended to help Hanzawa. The inspectors now couldn't do anything and one by one, their bags were searched. Until it was Ojiso's turn and Hanzawa himself searched Ojiso's bag. And sure enough, Hanzawa found the missing documents. Apparently, before the inspection started, Ojiso secretly hid the documents in his bag. It turned out that Ojiso did that on the first day, but Nakanishi found out. Then Ojiso threatened Nakanishi if he tell about this, then he could be fired. And this morning, Ojiso met with Nakanishi again to make sure that Nakanishi didn't open his mouth until the inspection was finished. However, Ojiso still avoided it and asked about the proof, and he accused Nakanishi of just making up stories. That Nakanishi turned on his cell phone. It turns out he secretly recorded his conversation with Ojiso this morning. In the conversation, it was clear that Ojiso was hiding the documents and also threatening the Kanishi. Ojiso was unable to move and Asano also looked embarrassed because he felt defeated, and then he ended this inspection. But again, Hanzawa was suspicious as to why there was a sudden inspection like this, when Hanzawa was trying to return the 500 million yen. Asano could only laugh and endure his defeat. On the other hand, in the hospital, there were guests visiting Komura. Initially, Komura chased them away, but he didn't expect that they were his daughter and his grandchild. It turned out that Komura had long cut off contact with them because he felt like a failure. But his daughter and his grandson still loves Komura as family. It turns out that Hanzawa contacted the journalists some time ago. Hanzawa asked the journalists to find out information about Komura's family. Then they found Komura's daughter and grandson. They also informed Komura's daughter that currently Komura was in the hospital. On the other hand, Hanzo was drinking with Tomari. Here, Tomari showed a magazine stating the news that Tokyo Central Bank was cheated out of 500 million yen by the Osaka Steel Company. Hanzoa kept quiet and smiled. Tomari immediately understood that it was Hanzoa who leaked this information to the media. Hanzoa then took a letter from Komura and it turned out that a few hours ago, Komura had died. Komura's daughter came to Hanzawa and gave him the letter. In the letter, Komura thanked Hanzala for bringing his daughter and grandson whom he had not seen for a long time. On the second sheet, it was also written Hikashida's current address. It turned out that the strategy of bartering information with the journalist was successful. Hanzawa asked for Komura's family's contacts and in return, Hanzawa gave the information about the Tokyo Central Bank, which was cheated out of 500 million yen. Now Hanzawa got a call from Takeshita, who was checking the address and it turned out that Hikashida was actually there. Takeshita also said that not long ago there was a man like a bank employee who met Higashida. Then Takeshita sent a photo of the man with Higashida. How surprised Hanzawa was because the man was Asano. It turned out that from the start, Asano has conspired with Higashida. After that, Hanzawa checking the background of Asano and Higashida. Hanzawa discovered the fact that they were friends in junior high school, so they have known each other for a long time. But this fact and also the photos still cannot yet be proof that they conspired to defraud 500 million yen. They could argue that they only met as old friend. Now Hanzawa has the idea to expose Asano's involvement. The next day, Asano holds a regular meeting with Hanzawa and the others. Asano said to Hanzawa that he should stop getting new company clients. Hanzawa's performance has now been branded bad by the office because of his negligence in losing 500 million yen. Suddenly, a message came into Asano's cell phone asking how much did Asano get from the 500 million yen fraud with Higashida. Of course, Asano was shocked when he saw a photo of himself together with Higashida. The message was sent by someone named Hana, but it turned out the message was sent by Hanzawa to start terrorizing Asano. In his room, Asano called Higashida and told him about this. Higashida warned Asano not to reveal their relationship. However, Asano suspected that this message was sent by Hanzawa, but he didn't have any proof. After that, Higashida was suddenly confronted by Hanzawa. Higashida was surprised because Hanzawa already knew where he was. That Higashida said that he's already hired a lawyer and claim himself bankrupt. Higashida threatens if the bank keeps pressuring him, he can sue the bank back. Hanzawa watched Higashida left, and Hanzawa saw a tissue box in Higashida's car. He suspects the tissue box has a symbol, and maybe it's a symbol of a bank. If it's true, then the money probably was in that bank. So Hanzawa asked Hikashida to check which bank matched with the symbol. In the evening, Hanzawa went home and he received a reply message from Asano saying he might misunderstand, and if he sends Asano another message, Asano will report it to the police. But Hanzawa was not afraid of the message. Meanwhile, at the Tokyo Central Bank, the top officials are holding a meeting regarding the news which is spread in the media. 
Of course, the news about Tokyo's central bank being cheated out of 500 million yen is a big thing for them, and Hanzawa's name has now became a special concern for the top officials there. Then moving back to Hanzawa's office, Asano now looks even more panicked because every day he continues to receive terror messages from unknown people. Hanzawa also told about Asano and Higashida to his subordinates whom he believes, and one of them is called Kaikuchi. He suddenly asked them all to pretend that he had never heard of this. It turns out that a few days ago, Kekuchi was ordered by Asano to be his accomplice to watch over Hanzawa. Coming home from the office, Hanzawa and his colleague followed Asano. When Asano got out of the car, they got into Asano's car. Luckily, Asano's private driver knew Hanzawa and didn't suspect him. Hanzawa asked if Asano was going to an unusual place lately. The driver also showed Hanzawa the place that Asano had visited in the last few months. Asano apparently often goes to the Kanzai Bank. Hanzawa was suspicious that there might be hidden transactions in the Kanzai Bank. So Hanzawa now had to look for Asano's savings book from Kanzai Bank to see the transaction. Hanzawa suspected that the saving book was in Asano's bag. Then one day, Hanzawa was in Asano's room. Suddenly, there was a message came into Asano's cell phone. The terror message appeared again. Asano, who was initially suspicious of Hanzawa, now saw that Hanzawa was not holding his cell phone. So Asano became increasingly confused and wondered who the sender of the mysterious message was. Then another message came in saying that his photo with Higashido would be sent to the division downstairs and could be seen by other employees. Asano panicked and immediately headed downstairs. And at that moment, Hanzawa immediately looked for Asano's savings book in his bag. Meanwhile, Asano looked for the photo so as not to let other employees see it. On the other hand, Hanzawa finally finds the saving book in a novel that has been hollowed out. In that savings book, Hanzawa sees there was a transaction of 50 million yen from someone named Miki. So Miki is Higashida's girlfriend. So it was clear that Asano got a bribe of 50 million yen from Higashida. Meanwhile, Asano was going to return to his room because the message was just a prank for him. The distance was too close, so if Hanzawa and the others came out, they would be found out. Then Hanzawa surrendered and sit in Asano's chair. But right when Asano opened the door, Kekuchi distracted Asano and said that he wanted to talk in private. Therefore, Hanzawa was finally able to get out of Asano's room because of Kekuchi's help. Meanwhile, Kekuchi said to Asano that he doesn't think he can betray Hanzawa. Hearing that, Asano threatens Kekuchi that he can do anything. But Kekuchi remained in his position. Then he said goodbye. Apparently, Hanzawa hearing Kekuchi's loyalty. And in the hallway, Hanzawa gives him a can of coffee as a sign of gratitude. Thanks to Kekuchi, Hanzawa managed to get Asano's savings book. While in his room, Asano was panicking and his room was a mess because he was looking for his savings book. It was gone somewhere. In that evening, Hanzawa and Takeshita discussed Asano's savings book. It was seen that after Asano accepted the bribe amount 50 million yen, the 48 million yen was directly transferred to a stock company. Hanzawa thought that Asano seemed to have suffered a loss in a stock transaction. That's why he needed the money. Asano's money flow came from Miki, not directly from Higashida. That means this evidence is not yet strong to prove that Asano and Higashida were conspired. Therefore, Hanzawa had to look for Higashida's account to prove that the flow really came from Higashida to Asano. Takeshida then told Hanzawa that Higashida was often at a bar with his girlfriend and that bar called Artemis. At the bar, Higashida received a call from Asano who reported that his savings book was missing. Hanzawa became their main suspect, so Higashida ordered Asano to immediately get rid of Hanzawa before things get worse. In the evening, Hanzawa talked with Tomari. Hanzawa showed Asano's account book and also the logo which Hanzawa suspects is the logo of a bank where Higashida keeps his money. Then, accidentally, a drop of water falls on the logo. Tomari added a shape to the logo and remembered something. It was a bank logo in New York and only customers who had 100 billion or more could open an account there. Hanzawa was even more convinced that the 500 million yen was still there. Not long after, Hanzawa got a call from Takeshita telling him that he just photographed something interesting. The next day, Higashida's girlfriend, Miki, took a flyer of shop rental advertising. Then, Hanzawa and Takeshia appeared to stop her. They found out that Miki apparently wanted to have a nail art salon in that building. And of course, she get the capital from Higashida. But Hanzawa suddenly showed a photo and Miki looked was making out with Itabashi, a man who used to work with Higashida. Hanzawa confesses that he wants Higashida's savings book where he keeps all his money. But Miki refused and said that she doesn't know where Higashida keeps it. Hanzawa then threatened to leak this photo to Higashida and Miki definitely know the consequences. Miki will definitely fail to open her nail art salon, but worst of all, she might be killed by Higashida. Miki slaps Hanzawa then asked him to do whatever he like, because she will find an excuse to deal with Higashida. 
After that, Mickey then leaves. Then one night, Mickey was visited by the tax bureau. It turns out that the tax bureau also wants Higashida's savings book so they can confiscate all his money. Meanwhile, Hanzoa went home and was greeted by his wife who was carrying a large box. It was a new bag for Hanzoa. It turns out Hana had been working part-time this week to earn money to buy Hanzoa a bag, because his old bag was dirty and worn out. Hana said when she worked, she understood that a woman works not only to make money, but to make other people around her happy. Hanzo was suddenly remembered when he threatened Mickey and belittled her efforts to open a nail art salon even just using her to catch Higashida. And today, Hanzo working in his office, drafting a document. After that, he met Mickey again. Mickey actually didn't want to see Hanzo anymore, but suddenly Hanzo said he's here as a banker. If Mickey wanted to start her business, she can borrow money from the bank and didn't depend on Higashida. If she really wanted to start her business, she must try to do it with her own strength. And Hanzo will help her. As Mickey had been using Higashida, so now she can utilize the bank for her business. Mickey was touched when she heard that because for the first time, she was seen as a woman who had a future. She had her own strength to start her business. So Mickey agreed with Hanzawa's suggestion. That night, Hanzawa was walking home and suddenly, Tomari called him. Tomari giving the news that tomorrow, the head office will make a decision for Hanzawa. He will probably be transferred and that is a subtle way to fire someone moving him to a distant place in an unclear job with a lower salary. Not long after, Takeshia also called Hanzo to tell a bad news because Mickey unexpectedly went to the tax bureau. Apparently, she was going to cooperate with the tax bureau. Hanzo was just silent when he heard it all. At the tax office, Kurosaki wanted Higashida's savings book. In return, Mickey's business, the nail art salon, were not touched by the tax authorities. While outside, Hanzo and Takeshia watched the tax office from a distance. Then not long after, a car was seen coming out. Mickey was in the car with Kurosaki. The next day, Kurosaki and the tax officers came to raid Hikashida's residence. Then, Hikashida took all of his savings books and gave them to Mickey to be kept safe. Mickey then ran away, and Hikashida opened the door. They searched all the rooms there hoping to get the savings book. However, outside, Mickey was seen getting into Kurosaki's car. It turned out that they had planned all. The savings books were now handed over to Kurosaki. Meanwhile, at the bank, Asano, Hanzawa, and other employees started their routine meeting in the morning. Asano suddenly asked to Hanzoa why he was still here. Because the news has spread that Hanzoa will be transferred. Hanzoa calmly answered that he will do that if there is an official letter. But according to Asano, Hanzoa was embarrassing and damaging their office's credibility. But Hanzoa said that Asano was the one who made this bank's credibility bad. Asano then slapped Hanzoa with a paper, but Hanzoa still looks at Asano as if to say he's not afraid of Asano. After the meeting at his desk, Hanzoa seemed to be waiting for something. Then, a courier came to the office and there was a package for Hanzawa. He immediately opened the package, which turned out Hikashida's savings book with a balance of 120 billion. Meanwhile, Kurosaki was now angry because Hikashida's savings book that Mickey had brought only contained a few million, because the main savings book had already been sent to Hanzawa. It turned out that all of this had been planned by Hanzawa. At that time, Mickey agreed to cooperate, but she didn't know where Hikashida's savings book so Hanzawa had the idea of using tax people to raid Hikashida so that he would take out his savings book and hand it over to Mickey. Finally, Hanzawa's plan was successful. Meanwhile, at the head office, the director, Awada, received Hanzawa's transfer file which would be transferred to Philippines. The next day, on Sunday, Asano and his family were on holiday. However, Asano suddenly got another message from the mysterious person. Now, Hanzawa sent a photo of Asano's savings book containing 50 million yen. Asano immediately panicked. Hanzawa also sent a message that he would report everything to the police and tell the media too, and Asano's wife and child. Asano is now afraid and begs the sender not to let his family know. If that's so, Asano has to apologize to one of his subordinates and admit all his crimes. That evening, Hanzawa wanted to punish Higashida. Hanzawa entered into a bar and Higashida usually came there. Then Higashida mocked Hanzawa and saying that the prices here are expensive, so he's afraid Hanzawa won't be able to pay. However, Hanzawa and Takeshita looked calm and said that today they are celebrating something, celebrating Hikashita's bankruptcy because all this money in the New York bank has been confiscated by the bank. The two tax bureau employees there were also surprised. How did Hanzawa get Hikashita's money? Hikashita still couldn't believe it and checked his account on his cell phone. And it turned out he couldn't log in anymore because the access was denied, which means now all of Hikashita's money can no longer be accessed. The 500 million yen has been confiscated and the rest has been frozen by the authorities. Higashida goes berser, but Hanzawa easily defeats him. Now Higashida can only scream hysterically and even now he can't pay the bill in the bar. 
The next morning, the Sano got news from the head office that Hanzawa managed to return the 500 million yen. Asano looked scared and now asked Hanzawa to meet him. Calmly, Hanzawa faces Asano. Then Asano asked how Hanzawa can return the money. However, Hanzawa actually asked Asano to imagine because he didn't want to reveal the way. Asano looks very nervous, then Hanzawa intends to leave. But suddenly, Asano apologized because Hanzawa shouldn't have to bear all that because this was Asano's negligence. However, Hanzawa questioned whether it was truly negligence and not something intentional. Then, Hanzawa emphasized that he already knew everything and would report it to the police. Even Asano's family will know about his crime. After hearing that, Asano begged Hanzawa not to do that. Asano explained that at that time, he was trapped in stock investments. He was too greedy until finally he bought shares and the price plummeted and Asamp lost 50 million yen. Because of that, he was forced to look for the 50 million yen by helping Higashida. Hanzawa suddenly strangled Asano's collar and said that he doesn't care about Asano's reasons and he doesn't have time to sympathize. Hanzawa will definitely destroy Asano, and after that Hanzawa left the room. Outside, suddenly Hanzawa thought for a moment and then he went back into Asano's room. Hanzawa then asked Asano to move him to the head office as deputy manager in Division 2. So the Division 2 is the most elite division where the smart people are there. Hanzawa threatened Asano, if he can't grant Hanzawa's wish, then prison will be his place to live. So like it or not, Asano granted Hanzawa's wish. And one more thing, Hanzawa demands Asano's promise that he will kneel and apologize to Hanzawa if Hanzawa succeeds in returning the 500 million yen. Then, Asano kneel and apologize. Hanzawa will leave Asano without a single word. Asano is now facing the executive director, Awada. Asano asked him to move Hanzawa to the head office in the Division 2. Awada was also already know about Hanzawa's success and finally agreed to move Hanzawa to the head office. But unfortunately, they were already planned Hanzawa's move to the Philippines. So someone has to replace him. Asano has now been transferred to the Philippines and he will work in a factory there. Hanzawa has now officially moved to the head office of Tokyo Central Bank in the Division 2. He walked into his new office and in the hallway he accidentally met the executive director, Awada. Hanzawa's memory came back to when his father begged a bank employee so that his factory would not be confiscated. But the banker was cold and still confiscated his father's factory. Hanzawa saw it, and it turned out he was the director, Awada, the person who had dumped his father until his father was frustrated and ended his life. One year had passed and Hanzawa became a deputy manager in Division 2 with a brilliant career. But at the top level, they were now panicked because the audit board was reported to be carrying out an inspection at Tokyo Central Bank in the next two weeks. The president director, Nakano, was worried, because if it is proven that there is negative performance in the bank, so the bank's credibility will decrease. The scene moved to Hanzawa. His boss informed that the director, Awada, had invited him to have dinner together. Hanzawa had already rejected the invitation twice, and it was difficult to reject him a third time. The news of the inspection from the audit board had spread, including to Hanzawa. Then in the evening, Hanzawa finally accepted Awada's invitation. Here, Hanzawa hold his emotion back because all this time, Hanzawa thought Awada as his enemy who made his father die. Then, Awada asked where Hanzawa came from. That and Hanzawa told about himself in the past when his father owned a factory, but he died when Hanzawa was still in middle school. Awada seemed relaxed when he heard Hanzawa's story. It seemed he didn't remember that he had made someone die. The next day, Hanzawa received big news for himself. His boss said that Hanzawa had been appointed to solve a case worth 12 billion yen. This case started with one of the borrowers at Tokyo Central Bank, the Aishima Hotel, who had borrowed 20 billion yen. But the Aishima Hotel turned out to have lost 12 billion yen due to investment failure and will be declared bankrupt. The strange thing is that even though there was a record that the hotel lost 12 billion yen, the bank still gave a loan of 20 billion yen, even though if a borrower had a debt of that amount, the bank would definitely refuse to give a loan. Hanzawa was appointed to investigate this oddity. Surprisingly, it was President Director Nakano who appointed Hanzawa directly to resolve this problem. He's the highest leader of Tokyo Central Bank. Hanzawa has now visited the Aishima Hotel. He met with hotel manager Hain. Hanzawa persuaded Hain to work together to find a way out, but it seems that she didn't care and said that the failure of 12 billion yen was their problem. So the bank had no need to interfere with it. Hanzawa felt that Hain could not be cooperated with and asked Hain to return the 20 billion yen that the bank lent them. Hain said that she would return the money if the bank officials agreed to it too. Now Hanzawa is searching for which branch of the bank gave the 20 billion yen to the Aisesima Hotel. The bank in question is the Tokyo Bank, Kyobashi branch. Hanzawa immediately came there and wanted to meet the manager, Kais. 
However, he was blocked by Kaiser's subordinate, Cosado. There, Cosado said that they were giving a loan to the Isesima Hotel, because there was no report from the hotel that they were losing 12 million yen. But Hanzawa was suspicious. How could the hotel not provide a loss report even though that was one of the conditions when they're going to borrow money? Now Hanzawa was looking for another way. He met someone who was a former employee of the Isesima Hotel in the Finance Division, and that person now works at the junkyard. He said that since there was a loan of 20 billion yen, suddenly he was just fired. And what was surprising, according to him, he had given a report to Kozato and Kay's that Isesima Hotel was losing 12 billion yen. Hanzawa immediately found out the truth. That evening, the finance person asked Kozato to come to a restaurant. There, he asked if he had already given Kozato a report of a loss of 12 billion yen. Kozato calmly confirmed that at that time, there was a report, but Kozato's boss asked him to cover it. Suddenly, Hazawa appeared from the next table. He was helped by his friend, Kondo, and apparently, he had recorded Kozato's words. Hanzawa then asked whether it was true that Kozato's boss asked him to cover up the report. Hanzawa asks where the report is, and Kozato replies that it is in the bank's safe, but his boss will retrieve the report tonight. Without wasting any time, Hanzawa went straight to the bank and threatened Kozato to come along. They managed to get the code number for the safe door and went straight into it. Anzawa immediately looked for the Isesima Hotel loss report among the pile of documents in the box. But at the same time, Kays came to the bank to take all the documents. Anzawa then told Kozato to close the safe door. Meanwhile, Kays was already inside the bank and was surprised when Kozato was there. Kozato said he wanted to help Kays to carry the documents. Then Kays told Kozato to open the safe door. After opening the safe door, Hanzawa and Kondo had disappeared. It turned out that they were hiding. Finally, Hanzawa managed to get the report which turned out to have been signed by Kais. It means that Kais was proven guilty, because he already knew the report but still approved a loan of 20 billion yen to the Isesima Hotel. The next day, coincidentally, Awada asked Hazawa to meet him in his room. Awasa asked about the progress of the Isesima Hotel case. Without fear, Hanzawa revealed everything, including Kais's lie to cover up the report of a loss at Hotel Isesima, so that a loan of 20 billion yen managed to flow to the hotel. Hanzawa also said that Kays was also told by his superior. Calmly, Awada said that Kays's boss is him. Apparently, Awada is the suspect. Hanzawa was not taken in by Awada's sarcasm, then said that if later Hanzawa find evidence that Awada was the perpetrator, then he must kneel before Hanzawa. Meanwhile, the Isesima Hotel case was already known to the audit board. Then a group of the audit board came to the Tokyo Central Bank for an investigation. Unexpectedly, it turned out that the investigation was led by Kurosaki, who used to be in the tax bureau. They held an investigative meeting and Kurosaki started asking how it was that the Isesima Hotel experienced a loss of 12 billion yen. Hanzawa explained that this was a loss because the hotel lost an investment. But the hotel was able to recover by updating its services, especially their system and online booking, which can later be done by the customers from any country. The online system will be created by an eight company called Nalusin. However, Kurosaki said that doesn't cover the fact that the Isesima Hotel suffered a loss of 12 billion yen. If the bank can't cover the loss, then the bank will have to prepare a compensation fund of 15 billion yen. Of course, this will be a great loss for the Tokyo Central Bank. If that happens, Tokyo Central Bank's shares could be shaken and public's trust will fall, and it is very likely that President Director Nakano, as the highest leader, will be fired. After that, Hanzawa immediately met with Kais and showed the loss report of the Isesima Hotel which he had signed. Kais was surprised and wondered where Hanzawa got the report, even though he had just moved a box of documents to another place last night. Hanzawa said this will be proof that Kais is guilty because he approved the loan to the Isesima Hotel. But Kais didn't want to be blamed because this was an order from his boss. And that person is the executive director, Awada. Then Hanzawa returned to his office. There, his subordinate said that the Isesima Hotel had several assets, and if the asset is sold, it might be able to cover the 12 billion yen loss. Knowing that, Hanzawa returned to the Isesima Hotel and met with Hain again. But suddenly, a man appears. He is the CEO of the Isesima Hotel, Yuaza. He was appointed CEO by his own father, who is the president director of the hotel. But currently, his father is sick, so the position of CEO is handed over to Yuaza. Then, Hanzawa confirmed if it is true that there are some assets which can cover the losses. The assets are high-value art items as well as an art museum belonging to Yuaza's family. If they can sell all of them, they can get around 10 billion yen. Yuaza also said he would try to persuade his father so that the museum and the art objects could be sold. In a restaurant, Owada was on the phone. Then he sat and chatted with someone, and she's Han. 
It was clear that they were both working together in the Isesima Hotel case. The next day, Hanzawa got a call from Yuasa about his father's art. His father apparently refused to sell his art, so their plan to cover the loss failed. Because of that, Hanzawa and all of his subordinates must work overtime, looking for assets belonging to the Isesima Hotel that can be sold and the total must reach 12 billion yen. There are some properties such as golf courses and resorts. They are trying to count it, but the total assets are only 5 billion yen. At 2 p.m., Hanzawa went to the Isesima Hotel to meet Yuaza. There, Hanzawa said that they really need to sell the arts and the museum belongs to Yuaza's family. That Hanzawa suggested a crazy idea to Yuaza. Hanzawa suggested that Yuasa should become the president director so that later, he could decide to sell the museum and the arts. Yuasa was shocked and pessimistic. He couldn't fire his own father from the position of president director. But Hanzawa assured Yuasa that this was the only way if the Isesima Hotel wanted to survive. In the morning, the investigation from the audit board started again. Kurosaki asked Hanzawa if he had succeeded in persuading the president of the Isesima Hotel to sell the museum and its art objects. Unfortunately, Hanzawa didn't succeed in persuading him. However, Hanzawa made Yuasa become the president director so that he himself was the one selling the museum and art objects. Kuroseki was surprised by Hanzawa's crazy method, how could a president director be fired for selling his own art objects? But it turned out that Yuasa called Hanzo this morning and told him that Yuasa's father was happy when Yuasa proposed to remove him from the president director position. Maybe he was tired and old enough from taking care of the hotel and wanted to be free. All the assets were worth more than 12 billion yen, which means Hanzawa managed to cover the losses. But Kurosaki didn't want to give in. He asked how Hanzawa and his subordinates would make the Isesima Hotel emerge from bankruptcy. Then Hanzawa answered that they will build an online system in collaboration with the IT company, Nalusin. But Kurosaki said Nalusin is threatened with bankruptcy. Hanzawa was shocked and ran to see the news. It turned out that the Nalusin company was suspected of violating patent rights and is now threatened with bankruptcy. It means the Isesima Hotel, which was previously able to rise with building an online system, was threatened with failure. The situation became even more serious when Hanzawa, who wanted to meet Yuasa, suddenly saw Iwata at the hotel too. Iwata suggested that Haim be appointed president director because the Isesima Hotel was threatened with bankruptcy and the Lucent Company also failed to cooperate. Iwata has discussed with the audit board and they have agreed to postpone making the Isesima Hotel a problematic customer for a year and the bank would still give a capital loan if Han became the president director. Of course, Yuasa and Hanzawa clearly did not agree. It turned out that this was what they had both been aiming for. Haim was aiming for the president director position and Iwasa wanted to get rid of Nakano, the president director of Tokyo Central Bank. Then, Hanzawa asked for additional time to resolve this problem. Then, Iwata actually acted arrogantly and asked Hanzawa to kneel to him. Hanzawa did it so he could solve the case. He was willing to kneel before his own enemy. That night, Anzala and his two friends discuss how to return the Isesima Hotel to a profit after losing 12 billion yen. After discussing it, Hanzawa again got a crazy idea. He met with Yuasa and conveyed his idea. So that the Isesima Hotel can survive, they must merge with another hotel. The most surprising thing is that Hanzawa suggested Yuasa merging with the Foster Hotel, a five-star hotel from America. Yuasa rejected the suggestion because it meant he would have to merge with his business rival. Then Hanzawa explained that the Foster Hotel has many branches and already has an online system integrated with all its branches. By joining Foster, the online system will also be implemented at Isesima Hotel. So Yuasa will no longer need help from the Nalusin company. They just need to join the Foster Hotel, and they will apply for the online system. Yuasa will think about this first and ask for time to decide. But Hanzawa emphasized that they only had two days before the audit board's final day of investigation. Meanwhile, the leaders at Tokyo Central Bank are holding a meeting and they are discussing the development of the Isesima Hotel. Iwata's colleague Kishikawa suggested that Hanzo would be asked to stop working on the case because it looked like he would fail. But Iwata refused that suggestion and said that the president director Nakano would definitely have his own judgment to assign Hanzawa. Of course, if Hanzawa failed, the bank would be ruined and Nakano would definitely be responsible for it. At that time, Iwata said sarcastically to Nakano, it's clear that Owada deliberately wants to corner Nakano and hopes that Hanzawa will fail. For the past two days, Hanzawa has been waiting for news from Yuasa who is still thinking about the merger plan. Then Haim comes to Yuasa's room and says that she will meet with Owada, talking about herself being the president of the Isesima Hotel, so they can save the hotel. At that time, Yuasa can only stare at Haim sharply. Meanwhile, Tomari has been talking to the Foster Hotel for the past few days, 
so that the merger of the two hotels can run smoothly. However, the final decision remains with Yuasa as the hotel's president. That evening, Hain and Awada had dinner together. They celebrated the victory that will happen soon. They are sure that when the audit investigation is carried out tomorrow, the Isesima Hotel will be considered bankrupt unless Han becomes the president director of the hotel. The next morning, the last day of investigation started. Kurosaki couldn't wait to be Hanzoa. He was sure that he would put Hotel Isesima in the category of customers who went bankrupt because they had lost cooperation with Melusin. But Hanzoa gave an explanation that was beyond expectations. The Isesima Hotel had apparently joined the largest hotel chain in America, the Foster Hotel. And now, they already have an online system that is equivalent to the Foster Hotel. With this system, the Isesima Hotel is predicted to bring big profits in the future, so that the hotel will not be included in the group of bankrupt customers. The proof is a short message sent by Yuasa this morning. It was said that he was already working with the Foster Hotel. Kurosaki couldn't move, and he lost to Hanzawa. Finally, the audit boards finish its investigation and judge that Tokyo Central Bank was a credible bank with no problems. For the Tokyo Central Bank, the problem had been resolved. But for Hanzawa, this was not finished yet. Hanzawa knew that the mastermind of all the problems related with the Isesima Hotel was Awada. And now, Hanzawa will collect evidence and reveal Awada's crime. On the other hand, Kondo, Hanzawa's best friend. Now he's working at an electrical company, Temiya Electric. Apparently, he found a suspicious financial record because in one of the months, he found two same books. And when Kondo checked it, it turned out that the two books had different numbers. Kondo was suspicious that this company had received a flow of illicit funds from certain parties. Because he was curious, Kondo went to the tax department to trace the flow of funds. From there, it turned out that Kondo found there was a 30 million yen transaction from the Tokyo Central Bank. And that same day, the money was transferred to a company called Levite. Kondo immediately went to the company which turned out to be a company in the fashion sector. The owner was a woman and secretly, Kondo followed the woman. The woman entered a luxury house and Kondo was shocked when he read the nameplate on the house. It was written Awada. It turned out that the woman was Awada's mistress. Kondo immediately called Hanzawa and told him all his findings. There was a strong suspicion that Awada used his power to channel money to Tamiya Electric, then to the Levite company. He deliberately used Tamiya Electric as a bridge, so that it is not suspected that the flow of funds went directly from Awada to his mistress. A few days later, the Tokyo Central Bank was holding a board of directors meeting. There, Hanzoa was going to be asked about the Isesima Hotel. Hanzoa then entered the room and the bank officials were already seated, including President Director Nakano. Hanzoa began to explain the Isesima Hotel case. But unexpectedly, Hanzoa said something surprising. He said that the Isesima Hotel case started with the approval of a loan worth 20 billion yen, even though the hotel was losing 12 billion yen. After he investigated, it turned out that there was someone who was trying to cover it up. The person was Kai's, a branch director, and Kai's apparently was ordered by his superior, that is Awada. Suddenly, the meeting became noisy. They couldn't expect Hanzawa to reveal this boss's crime. Hanzawa continued to say that Awada did that because he wanted to overthrow Nakano. Not only that, it turns out that Awada transferred 30 million yen to Tamiya Electric, then channeled the funds to the Levite company owned by Awada's mistress. Hanzawa also investigated the Levite company, and it turns out that Levite is a business company that has a debt of up to 10 million yen. Hanzawa also told Awada that his mistress also borrowed money from loan sharks to cover the debt. However, her business actually got worse and her debts piled up until it reached 100 million yen. That's why Awada gave 30 million yen to his mistress to cover that debt. Awada was mad and refused to admit it, but Hanzawa already had all the proof of the flow of funds and also all the data from Levite. Suddenly, Nakano asked Awada's assistant, Kishikawa. Nakano asks if Kishikawa knows about all this, and Kishikawa immediately panics. Awada forbade Kishikawa to speak. But Kishikawa knew that there was no point in protecting Awada any longer. So he actually knows all of Awada's crimes. He also stated that everything Hanzawa said was true. Awada couldn't do anything anymore. Awada's crimes had been completely exposed in front of Tokyo Central Bank officials. Hanzawa reminded Awada of his promise. At that time, Awada promised that if Hanzawa could save the Isesima Hotel and prove that Awada was the culprit, Awada would have to kneel in front of Hanzawa. Awada holds back the anger, shame, hatred, and all the emotions in his heart and slowly kneels in front of Hanzawa. Then, Hanzawa immediately left the room. With the discovery of Awada's crime, he was removed from his position as the executive director. Now, Hanzawa has finished taking his revenge on Awada, and the film ended. Well, that's the storyline of the drama entitled Hanzawa Nebuki. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time.